This lecture will be talking about experiencing freedom from anxiety. We're talking in these lectures about freeing our changed hearts. We've talked about freeing them from guilt, freeing them from bitterness, and here's the third one, freeing them from anxiety. And if we could get those three blockages removed from our spiritual hearts, we will experience to a greater degree than ever before, an untroubled heart. Remember, guilt primarily in relationship to God, bitterness primarily in relationship to other people, but anxiety primarily in relationship to ourself. Anxiety anticipates non-existent dangers and it dwells on them and then anxiety, similar to bitterness, begins to work inside of us and begins to create lots of problems for us. It's a painful uneasiness in our mind, in our spirit, that keeps the heart troubled, and it does affect our relationship with the Lord and with other people. Anxiety disorders are a huge problem, especially in the United States. The National Institute of Mental Health has said anxiety disorders as a group are the most common mental illness in America. More than 19 million American adults are affected by these debilitating illnesses each year. The doctors in the state say 75 to 90 percent of all the people that come to them with any kind of problem are basically stress-related disorders. Stress is a huge problem in our society, but in societies around the world, wherever these lectures are heard, I'm sure people are feeling stressed, anxious, worried, tied up internally. And practically every day on the news, we have new anxiety-producing material. There's another war, there's another problem, there's another ec economic collapse, there's another virus out there. We are bombarded with messages every day. And these are, are anxiety producing things that we're almost forced to digest. You can't get away. The radio, the newspaper, the television, and fears. And we begin to internalize those. And those, again, begin to distract us. Someone has said that most of us are crucified between two thieves, the guilt of yesterday and the anxieties of tomorrow. Still have not resolved issues from the past, and that crucifies them, worried about everything in the future and not able to enjoy the present because all the regrets of the past, all the anxieties of what might possibly happen. But again, like anything else, God has an answer. God has an answer for our anxiety. We're his children, and he doesn't want his children to be filled with anxiety and worry and stress because he knows that that turns everything internally. It becomes all about us and affects our relationship with him and our effectiveness for him. Probably the clearest scripture that I know that gives God's answer for anxiety is found in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. And again, I would encourage you to look at those scriptures, to internalize them, and we're going to walk through those verses fairly carefully. And if you apply these scriptures and the power of the Spirit of God, you will find freedom from anxiety. That blockage will be removed, and you'll be at peace in a new way. Here's the scripture. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts in your minds in Christ Jesus. Sounds simple, doesn't it? 
Let's go through it. First, be anxious for nothing. What, anx what anxiety does, it shows that we have taken things into our own hands rather than trusting God. When we become anxious, what we're doing is eliminating really the God out of the equation. And how do you know again when you're anxious? A friend gave me this little phrase. He said, pay attention to the tension. When I feel myself getting tight, tense, I need to pay attention to that because that simply means I'm taking things back into my own hands. I'm not trusting God. And, and I do that often. And I find myself, whoa, how's this going to work? Why, what about that? And I know it's starting to get anxious or tense. You pay attention to that. But what happens when you become anxious? It says, be anxious for nothing. So when I become anxious, what happens? Let me give you some of the things that happens. First, I become the center of the universe rather than God. It becomes all about me. And, and again, God has forgotten. I, how is this going to affect me, my family, what's going to happen? And I become the center of the universe. The other thing that happens when I become anxious is I deny Christ's power and promises. He has promised to be with me. He's promised to provide for me. He's promised that if I would cast my burdens upon him and my cares upon him, that he would take care of me. But when I do that, I'm denying that God is able. I've got to take control. I've got to make it happen. I've got to fix this rather than trusting him. And I forget part of that process. I forget I have a personal relationship. I'm not an orphan. He's my father. Step back. A father, a loving, heavenly father. And he cares about everything that I care about, and he's going to support the life that he's given. I'm not an orphan crying in the wilderness. I'm not an orphan that has to take care of himself. I'm a child of the Heavenly Father. The other thing that happens is when I become anxious, I abandon faith when anxiety begins. Faith and anxiety can't coexist together. Somebody said worry is a mild form of atheism. There's no God. I have to worry about it. I have to try to fix it. And we become distracted and divided when we worry. Because I'm focusing on tomorrow and what's going to happen, what might happen. And the chemical and electrical energies of my life are frustrated. And they're poured in the body. and They're not used. And I, again, am very distracted from my relationship to God. Psalm 37, verse 8 says, do not fret, do not worry, because it leads to evil. The evil it leads to is again abandoning God. I like this statement. Worry is not believing God will get it right. And bitterness is believing that God got it wrong. It's worth repeating. Worry is not believing God will get it right. And bitterness is believing that God got it wrong. It all comes back so often to our concept of God as the Heavenly Father, and that I'm his child, and that I have the assurance of that relationship, and God will take care and support the life that he has given. And he cares about every detail of our life, and there is nothing, nothing too big for God, too difficult for God, and there's nothing too small for God's fatherly concern. And that's the next part of the verse. So be anxious for nothing. Why? Because it's destructive. Because it denies that relationship with God, that father concept of God. But he doesn't just say, don't worry about it. Sometimes people say that to us. I say, don't worry about it. And they put a period there. God doesn't put a period there. God says, don't be anxious, but he doesn't say, 
period. He said, but be prayerful. Pray about everything. And when he says be anxious for nothing, he means nothing. When he says pray about everything, he means pray about everything. Everything that bothers you. Right? And if you can get into that habit of casting your care upon him, a worry or anxiety comes and you find yourself beginning to get a little bit tense and uptight about it and uh, starting to get stressed, that is a warning light, that's a signal, that's a warning light on the dashboard of your life saying, wait a minute, I need to cast this on God. And that is a violent word, cast it on God. Lord, I don't know, I have an answer to this. I don't know what to do about it. It's bothering me. I find myself getting agitated and anxious and uptight and worried about it. And I pour out my heart to you. And Psalm 62, verse 8 has been probably one of the most meaningful verses for me on prayer. Pour out your heart before God, O ye people, and trust in him. And that's what prayer is. It's pouring out your heart. It's emptying the anxiety, emptying the guilt, emptying the bitterness. Keep emptying it. Keep emptying it out. Pray about everything. If it's great enough to bother you, it's great enough to talk to God about. People say, I don't want to bother God with that. But if you don't pray about everything that bothers you, here's what happens. It's a cumulative effect. This is not that big a deal. It irritates me. I feel a little anxious about it. Not that bad. I can handle it. Something else happens. It's kind of small. I'm anxious about it. And that piles up. And this cumulative effect is that pretty soon you find yourself a very anxious, uptight, distraught person and you begin to get overwhelmed. So you need to switch from a worry list to a prayer list. Take the things that are on your worry list begin to build up and put them over on your prayer list and pour them out to God. Pour them out. You won't get a, a definite, immediate answer to that problem. That's not the point. The point is you've released it. You've given it to God. You've gotten it off your shoulders and you put it on him. You cast your burden on the Lord. That's so important to learn to do. Have you benefited from our teaching ministry? Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting us with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.